and physiotherapist and also a strength and conditioning consultant at Inside Edge Physiotherapy in the UK. So today's um, short video is all about how to create a durable and robust climber. Okay, so within our philosophy, okay, we take very much the approach um, of an athlete first approach as opposed to a climber first. So what does that really mean? So, um, you know, some physiotherapists and some um, uh, climbing coaches will obviously favour um, more, more biomotor uh, capacities and abilities, okay, or physical capacities around what's specifically needed for climbing. We take a slightly different approach here because what we believe is that if you make uh, the climber robust and an athlete first, Okay, then what you do is you reduce the chance of erroneous, um, voluminous loads of climbing, which ultimately lead to overuse injuries. So our injury durability model, which, which we have here, essentially it starts with the climber's mindset or the athlete, or it starts with an athlete mindset. And the mindset is you want to be better and you're willing to do whatever it takes in order to get better. And we are talking about the recreational um, climbing athlete here as opposed to the professional athlete but this stuff will apply to the professional athlete but mindset first is really important because if you take the right mindset then you will want to do what we suggest that you do in order to make yourself into a robust climbing athlete okay so the first part of our injury durability model is this essentially strength first and we don't mean finger strength first ordinarily because look most climbers spend most of their time climbing so if you've been climbing for more than five or six years okay generally speaking you're going to have robust tendons okay you're going to have strong tendons and strong flexor muscles what we tend to find is that actually the climber has a very poor chassis or a very poor infrastructure okay away from their forearms and their fingers okay which basically means they have a inherent weakness so we start with a, essentially, look, we want your lower limb and your upper body um, relative strength to be high, okay? So that's using, essentially, to just, uh, traditional um, external load and, and, and resistance training modalities to improve your strength. Because if we improve your strength, then your explosiveness and your power will naturally come um, as a consequence of that, especially if you are a naive uh, strength trainer, i.e., and what I mean by that is you haven't, uh, you don't have a, a background in um, you know resistance-based training, you know squats, deadlifts, and so on. Okay, so we start with a relative strength issue. So what ideally for the lower limb, you should be able, okay, to squat, okay, and deadlift your body weight, okay, as a minimum. You should be able to do that, and you should be able to do that between five and ten times, okay, ideally ten. Now. Um, for the upper body, okay, you should be able to pull your own body weight up plus an external resistance, okay, of between 25 to 50 percent. Okay, the reason why we have these numbers is because actually it will make you robust. It one, it will make you strong, and also it will Im improve your ability to endure. So it will improve your endurance. Okay, there's not many athletes, okay, but who are not strong who develop overuse injuries in our experience, at least. And certainly some of the literature also suggests that actually if you are strong, okay, um, you know, strength, strength is protective to a degree, obviously, because there are multiple factors um, that can lead to uh, overuse injuries uh, and so on. Okay, so that's our issue about relative strength. So one of the core components is movement efficiency. Okay, so movement efficiency when you climb is fundamentally important because it affects your because it affects your biomechanics. Uh, it affects your biomechanics and it also affects your energetics as well. So it will affect your metabolism. Okay, if you are efficient, okay, then you will use then you will use less energy, okay, to accomplish a particular task, which means you will have then more um, more left in your tank, okay, in order to send that particular problem. Okay, and what, what in regards to movement efficiency is about moving well as a climber. So it often comes down to coaching. Okay, and often, okay, what you require, okay, is um, is additional coaching. So that's one of our boxes to tick: movement efficiency. The next thing is three hundred and sixty degree core strength, or to put it another term, chassis integrity. 
okay? And what we're talking about essentially is 360 degree core strength, okay? So that's your core, okay? Often most people associate the core just with the abdominals. Well, that would be incorrect, okay? So the core is actually more than that, okay? So you have, uh, yes, you have the abdominals at the front, but you also have muscles at the side, okay? Uh, which are responsible, okay, for, for um, providing core strength. In addition, also as well, to the posterior muscles, so the spinal extension muscles, okay? Um, and also there are others as well, such as glute med and, and also the rotator cuff, but, but, we will, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So the next part of this is uh, postural smartness, okay? And essentially, in regards to postural smartness, we're talking about motor control and, and basic, underlying, uh, basic underlying strength of key regions within the body, okay? And they tend to be the regions which, one, become injured, and two, also improve our rotational profile. So that would be the hip musculature as an example. So, once, so, so some of the key muscles that, that we want to challenge would be um, the uh, lateral hip rotators and also uh, the hip abductors, um, such as gluteus medius, um, uh, such as gluteus medius rather. Okay. Around the shoulder, well, it's the obvious ones, it's the rotator cuff. Okay, so having a strong rotator cuff, yes, is important. Okay, and often we find uh, that that, that climbers often okay, are, are not as strong around their cuff musculature as one might expect. Um, but it's not good enough just to be strong. You also, we want the muscles to be smart as well. And what I mean by that is you want the muscles okay, to be well coordinated. So what we're talking about is intermuscular coordination. So we want your cuff okay, to be strong, to be smart, and also okay, to be working whilst other muscles are working as well to fixate. Um, the shoulder girdle, for example, to fixate um, uh, the uh, scapula. Okay, um, so it's it's quite it's quite important that we that we also deal with um, this region of the body. And then obviously, finally, can we have mobility? So mobility is really important. Now, what we're, what we're not talking about is being overly flexible, because you will see climbers that, that engage in huge amounts of yoga. And while there's nothing wrong with that, if you fundamentally um, have a problem with mobility, um, you know, what goes up must come down. So if you're overly flexible, then you need to have the strength to control those ranges of motion. So rather than actually talking about flexibility, essentially what we really are talking about is do you have the ability to make the right shape? So whatever that shape is, whether it's a drop knee, whether it's an Egyptian, whether it's a rock over, do you have the ability to make that shape? Because if you can make that shape, then you're going to be, biomechanically, you're going to be able to produce the necessary forces that are required to overcome the external resistance, i.e. gravity, or to pull on a hold, or to move over a hold. So that's how we think about mobility. Do you have the ability to make the right shape? If you have the ability to make the right shape, then that's all you need. You don't need any more than that. Okay? Any more than that is really just extra. Okay? And it's wasted training time. The final part, and you'll notice that we haven't really said much about climbing since then. Now, all of the phases prior to that, okay, the climber can still be engaged in climbing okay, to improve um, one, their endurance, and also really to improve their skill, okay, so their skill associated with the task. Now, the key issue next is the thing we call tactical metabolic conditioning, and this is where we tend to find that climbers often make the most amount of mistakes. Because often, what we'll find is the climber will be doing 4x4s, they'll be using system boards, they'll be on finger boards, they'll be using campus boards. Okay, we class that as tactical metabolic conditioning. That comes right at the end, okay, when you've got a baseline, a baseline of movement skill, okay, and general climbing endurance, but also you've tackled all of the other issues. So you've got good relative strength, you've got good postural smartness, you've got good mobility, okay? Um, you move efficiently, you've got 360 degree core strength. So, and as I say, this is where climbers make the mistake. They spend an awful lot of their time working on the obvious stuff, which basically, most of this stuff involves building up the forearm muscles, okay? Building up the finger muscles, okay? Um, and, 
increasing the volume. So they're already climbing lots anyway, and what they do, they add more volume, okay, so more climbing volume, very specific climbing volume, and there's nothing wrong with specificity, but too much volume is too much volume, okay, and that's often what leads to overuse injuries. So what we would say is get the other stuff, okay, pick out the low hanging fruit first, okay, then you add this on, and that then ultimately leads to optimal performance. So, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this very short um, video on how to make a durable climber. Okay, we are inside Edge Physiotherapy. Okay, we're based in the UK. We're also online as well. Um, and my name is Uzo Ehiok. I'm the clinical director of Inside Edge Physiotherapy, uh, specialist climbing physiotherapist, and also a um, strength and conditioning consultant. Okay, bye for now.